Introducing Morpholino Oligos and their use for blocking protein synthesis. Morpholino Oligos are molecular tools that are commonly used in vitro and in vivo to block translation of a targeted transcript, modify splicing of a pre-mRNA, or disable a functional sequence of RNA. Morpholinos are currently used in research and medicine, including human therapeutics. This video explains what Morpholino Oligos are, their mechanism of action, how they block translation, and how to tell if Morpholinos are working in your translation blocking experiments. What are Morpholino Oligos? Morpholinos are similar to natural nucleic acids but have an unnatural backbone structure. They are usually single strands about 25 subunits long. Each subunit has one of the four DNA bases, A, C, G, or T, bound to a methylene morpholine ring and a dimethyl amino phosphorodiamidate. The uncharged phosphorodiamidates link the methylene morpholines together to make the backbone of a long molecule, an oligomer, with bases sticking out along the backbone. The Morpholino's Mechanism of Action Morpholinos are usually used as antisense molecules. If you know the sequence of an RNA chain you would like to block, we can design a morpholino for you with a sequence complementary to your target. Once inside the cell, it will base pair with your target RNA, covering the target sequence like masking tape. In some regions of RNA, binding a morpholino will block a function, such as binding of SNRPs, proteins, or RISC, or progression of the translation initiation complex. This is called steric blocking and differs from the mechanism of action found in some other antisense molecules, which, instead, bind to and trigger the degradation of their target molecules. Morpholinos just bind and get in the way. While there are many inventive and exotic uses for morpholinos, they're most commonly used to silence the expression of a targeted transcript. There are several ways to inhibit expression of a transcript, such as by modifying the processing of pre-mRNA, by disrupting the transport of mRNA, or as we will focus on here, by blocking translation of an mRNA. In an animal cell, most translation starts with the binding of the small subunit of the ribosome to the upstream end of the 5' untranslated region of an mRNA, also called the 5' UTR. Proteins bind at and near the 5' cap, the small subunit of the ribosome arrives, and after some proteins dissociate, the initiation complex is formed, which moves downstream along the mRNA until it encounters a start codon. There, the large subunit of the ribosome binds to the small subunit and the mature ribosome is formed, which proceeds along the mRNA, putting amino acids together to make a new protein. Once the ribosome reaches a stop codon, it dissociates from the protein and the mRNA. Translation has occurred. In order to prevent translation, a morpholino must interrupt the process before the large subunit binds and forms the mature ribosome. This is because mature ribosomes can displace bound morpholinos from their RNA targets. However, if the initiation complex encounters a morpholino stably bound in the 5' UTR or covering the start codon, then the mature ribosome can't form. Translation stops before it can start, and the transcript is silenced. This is the mechanism that determines the targetable region for a translation-blocking morpholino. Even if the morpholino only binds to the start and extends downstream into the upstream end of the coding sequence, it can still stop the mature ribosome from forming. But if the morpholino is targeted to the processed transcript a little bit downstream of the start codon, the mature ribosome forms and starts translating codons into protein melting the morpholino from its target as the ribosome translates on through. How to tell if morpholinos are working in your experiment? As I mentioned earlier, unlike certain other antisense molecules, steric blocking morpholinos don't cleave their RNA targets. That means you can't reliably use an RNA-based method like reverse transcriptase PCR to see if your translation blocking morpholino oligo is working. Instead, you need a protein assay to see if the concentration of the protein is decreasing as old protein is degraded and translation of new protein is blocked. This almost always involves an antibody, 
and usually a western blot is done to see if the protein band is becoming more dim compared to a sham-treated control. You won't see strong protein knockdown if you assess the concentration of the target protein right away, because the morpholino doesn't degrade the protein that was already in the cell. It just inhibits synthesis of new protein. In untreated cells, protein turnover occurs as old proteins are degraded and new proteins are made to take their place. In a morpholino knockdown, normal protein degradation occurs, but new synthesis from the targeted transcripts is inhibited. The amount of time it takes to see a knockdown by western blot depends on the turnover rate of the protein. Some rapid turnover proteins, such as many transcription factors, will show a clear difference by western blot within 24 hours, while a structural protein may require a week or more to see a clear difference. Morpholino Delivery There are many methods for delivering morpholinos into cells. In 2019, methods commonly used include microinjection, especially into embryos, electroporation using pulses of voltage to make cells leaky, the endoporter endosomal escape reagent used for tissue culture, and vivomorpholinos, which have a group covalently attached to the oligo to help it get into cells in cultures and in adult animals. Morpholinos are widely used in developmental biology for knockdown in embryos. Vivo morpholinos are effective in many adult animal systems, such as mice and rats. Because of the relatively long complementary sequence required for knockdowns, morpholinos are more specific than most other antisense. The synthetic backbone of a morpholino is not recognized by nucleases, so they are very stable in biological systems. These characteristics of specificity and stability have made them very useful not only as research reagents, but also pharmaceutical candidates. A morpholino called exon dis 51 also called etaplersin, which targets exon 51 of the human dystrophin gene, has been approved for use in humans by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for treatment of some forms of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. As of 2019, more morpholino drugs are in clinical trials. Morpholino oligos have been shown effective in animals, protists, bacteria, plants, and fungi, as well as some viral targets. The versatility of steric blocking antisense promises many exciting research reports and innovative morpholino drugs in the future. To see published work using morpholinos, visit the searchable online database of research publications at pubs.gene-tools.com.